Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using Alice. Today things begin to get really fun. We are going to start using events which will allow you to interact with your creations, essentially enabling you to make games. Events are really easy to make. At the top of your screen you'll see the Create New Event button. Press that and choose how you want the event to be initiated. A button press, a mouse click and so forth. Pick when a key is typed. In the first box, you can assign it a keyboard key to the event. We'll pick up. In the second box, you can pick an object and a method for them to do. We will make a method for our man to do. We'll move him forward one meter. Put that method into the event and press play. Every time we press the up arrow, he moves forward one meter. It's that easy. We will make a small game and show you how things can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. In other words, using events is easy, making games is not. But it's a lot of fun to try. The game we will make will involve trying to make the man catch the raccoon. He has to move around and try and grab the raccoon and pick it up. All the time, the raccoon will be trying to get away from him. Let's first set up the basic movements for the man. We need him to be able to move left and right, as well as try to grab the raccoon. So, we'll create the two turn methods and events for those using the left and right arrows. the grab method we made earlier. Here's the code if you want to pause the video and check it out. This is the code for him bending down. The standing up instructions are the same but in reverse. We'll assign the spacebar to the grab method. Press play and see what happens. He can move around, and when the space bar is pressed, he tries to grab the raccoon. Now we need to think about how to program the raccoon. He needs to move around in an unpredictable manner to try and escape from the man. How can you do that? Well, we showed you a way in our last video using random numbers. So let's make a new method for the raccoon called random move. In it, we'll make the raccoon move forward 0.5 meters and then turn left or right and move again. That means we will need an if-else block. If something happens, turn left, else turn right. Put the turn left and right actions in with 0.5 values as default. What should that something be? Well, ideally, we would like it to turn left 50% of the time and turn right 50% of the time. We can make a world variable that is a random number. The default is a random number between 0 and 1, say 0 0.573. So if that random number is greater than 0 0.5, the raccoon can turn right, else it turns left. In other words, a 50-50 chance of being over 0 0.50. We need to give this number to the method, so the method needs a parameter. Give the method a number parameter with a good name and put the a is greater than b function in the if-else block. Put the parameter where the a is and make b 0 0.5. So this says, if the random number variable we get is greater than 0 0.5, we should make the raccoon turn left, else it should turn right. Now we can take this a step further. It will be too easy if we know the exact amount that the raccoon will turn, 
so let's make that random as well. Give the method another parameter and call that turn amount. Put that parameter into the amount the raccoon should turn. Remember that the parameter is just like a box in which to put the information we'll get given. It finds the spot in the method with the same name as itself and puts its information in that spot. Now we make another world variable and put another random number in it. And this time, we'll set the minimum to 0 and the maximum to 0 0.5, so the most it'll ever turn is half a revolution. Let's put our method into the main and then drag the variables into that method where the correct parameter is. This is the information that we're putting into that box. Press the play button to see if it works. Okay, maybe not what we expected. Let's figure out what happened. This is a process called debugging. When your game does something unexpected and you have to figure out why it's not doing what you expect. I will tell you this now and please heed my advice. At times you will believe there is nothing wrong with your code and that it should be working. I'm afraid if it isn't working, then it's your code. You just have to figure out what is wrong. Alice will do just as it's told, even if sometimes you think it's doing things it shouldn't be. Let's find clues to solve our problem. I was kind of hoping the raccoon would keep moving. So this is a fairly easy problem to solve. The method is only being used once, so we need a loop to keep using it over and over. But what kind of loop? We don't know how long it will take for the person playing to catch the raccoon, so we'll just do it forever. Use a while loop and set it to true. It will keep going until it changes to false. Put our method in the loop and press play. Now the raccoon turns the same direction and amount every time. Not very random. If you look at the default values for the variables, you will see that they are both 1. And 1 is a full revolution. So we are definitely giving a random number because the raccoon doesn't turn all the way around. We have to run the functions in our loop as well so that we make new random numbers every time before we use our method. Otherwise, we'll just use the first random number we make over and over. So put the two functions in the loop and press play. There you go. Off he goes, the crazy little fella. Okay, so now the man can grab the raccoon, and the raccoon can run around trying to get away. However, now we need some way to decide whether or not the raccoon has been caught when the man tries to grab him. To do this, we'll make another method. The question now is where do we use this method? Logically, it seems sensible to check when he's at the bottom of the grab. Let's make a method for the man called Did He Get It? Leave it blank for now, and we'll put it between the man reaching down and coming back up again. Let's look at our code from the start, just to remind ourselves what's going on. When Alice starts, it will call world my first method. This starts our loop, and we get the raccoon off and moving. While this is happening, we can press some buttons which will also call methods. The spacebar will make our man grab by calling the man.grabRaccoon method. In that method, we call another method which will test to see if we caught it. So here we have methods calling methods, calling methods, confusing it can be. The more you practice though, the easier it will become. Right, let's finish our did he get it method. Sounds like we need an if else, if we need to test something. So let's throw one of those in straight away. What happens if he does get it? Well, he'll pick up the raccoon. What's the best way to do that? Set the raccoon's vehicle to the man's hand. 
either hand will do. Ideally, we would like it to be the hand the raccoon is closer to, but that's probably getting a bit complicated for now, so we'll just keep it simple. Okay, now we're going to do something a bit different. We want to check if the raccoon is near either of his hands, so we are going to use the Boolean logic function, either A or B or both. Put it in the if-else and take the defaults. Remember, Boolean just means true or false, so it's saying that it will happen if A is true or B is true or both are true. That means only one of the conditions has to be true for the if to happen. Now we need to put a function into the a and b. Yes, you can put functions in functions. Put the a is less than b into both. We are going to say, pick up the raccoon if either hand is within 0.3 meters. So go to the man's right hand and pick its distance to function and select raccoon and put it in A. Then put the 0 0.3 in the B part. Do the same for the left hand after the OR. Now let's add a little message to bring up when he gets caught. We already placed ours in the background, and we're going to set it is showing properties to false. And when we catch the raccoon, we'll change it to true. So let's try it and see what happens. Hmm, a problem. When we catch him, he carries on going. We need to figure out some way to get him to stop when he's caught. Well, to do that, we need to stop the loop. One way to do it is to create another variable. This time, though, instead of a number, we'll make it a boolean, or a true-false. We'll put the variable in the loop instead of the default true. Make sure the variable starts as false, because when we start the program, we won't have caught the raccoon. Now if at any point in the code we take that variable and change it from false to true, that loop will stop. So where should we stop it? Well, after we've caught him. So in our did he get it method, put the variable and change it to true. So the loop will go round and round with Alice checking that it is false every time before it makes the raccoon move, when we catch the raccoon, it will change it to true, and Alice will ignore the loop and do any instructions underneath it, which we don't have at the moment. So let's see if it works. Excellent. Except it looks like the raccoon is in the middle of the man's body. So, after the loop, we will raise his arms so he holds it above his head like the Stanley Cup. Now let's try it again. Hey, there we go. A simple game. This is quite a lot to take on board, but if you understand all our previous lessons, you have the tools to do this. Just start simple and keep adding little pieces to make the game more complicated. For instance, right now, we have no way to stop the raccoon running off the screen so we can't see it anymore. How would you solve that problem? Next lesson, we will see how you can use sounds in Alice. Until then, thanks for watching.